What is good? Fuck. Good. <laughs> Everyone. Shoobs here. <laughs> this is so scuffed. <laughs> <laughs> Quick disclaimer before the video starts, these switches were provided by Prevail Key Company who sent them in to me for review. Uh, they are one of my affiliate sponsors, but I'll be taking a look at these switches and as objectively as possible and to show you guys what I really think about them personally. What is good everyone, Shoops here. Today we're going to take a look at these bad boyos. Oh, this is gonna be a pain to ask to focus, huh? These guys. Ooh. The uh, Everglide Water King V3s, also known as Aqua King V3s. What a goddamn name. I have no clue why they are named Water Kings, but honestly, these Switch names that are coming out these days might as well be for anime characters at this point. We'll be taking a look and comparing these switches to some of the popular linears that are readily available in the market. And uh, if you want to compare the specs and have a small reference for sound for more uh, linear switches, you can check out my big bad linear switch comparison video where I take a look at a larger pool of switches. A little information on these switches, these are Everglide switches which are manufactured by JWK. But unlike your average recolor, the composition of the switch is quite interesting. It is made up of a full polycarbonate, including the stem. Uh, this is actually the first switch that I've seen with a polycarbonate stem, so I was like super interested in it. And uh, yeah, that's basically what the composition of the switch is. Usually, JWK, um, the standard JWK would be PC top, nylon bottom with a palm stem, so this deviates from that pretty uh, greatly. So the switches that we're going to be comparing the water, aqua, fucking H2O kings <laughs> is going to be alpacas, which is a standard JWK, uh, tangerines, which features a full unwipe housing, also made by JWK, uh, banana splits, lavenders, uh, Gatoron milky top yellows, Gatoron black inks, Telios, cherry MX blacks, this is the hyperglides, and the novel key creams. Looking at the stems of these switches, the stem of the Water Kings are pretty much standard shape and length in line with all the other JWK manufacturer switches. The stem features a lot of factory lube which is pretty problematic and there were some issues with the stem as well and I'll touch on that in a little bit. So for the wobble test it's gonna be scuffed as always. I'll just be uh, free free handing all this shit. Um, so uh, I would just want to say that each of these switches batches can vary and then the tightness of the housing can vary batch by batch so this isn't 100% accurate. Take this with a grain of salt but let's get into the wobble test. So looks like the Everglide Water King V3s are <laughs> really really tight. There's virtually no up or down or left right wobble. These are the Alpaca V2s, there's very minimal wobble as well. The V2 molds are pretty tight. The Banana Splits have a little bit more wobble than these two, but it is still pretty good. Lavenders are on the same as the Banana Splits. Tangerines are probably the same as well. Uh, the Telioses have a bit of wobble up, down, and left, right. Gatoron Yellows. A uh, bit of wobble up, down, left, right. Gatoron inks, bit of wobble up, down, left, right. Cherry MX blacks, hyperglides, a bit of wobble. And the creams are pretty tight as well. Um, yeah. Like always, we'll be doing a sound test for all these switches for stock and then lube them film second. Just be mindful that uh, everyone's case plate, uh, room acoustics, desk properties, looping technique, and all that is different, so sound tests aren't going to be 100% accurate, and just take it with a grain of salt. 
the co uh the what is it the case i'm using is the mode 80 with all gaskets installed aluminum plate i use this board for every single sound test that i do on this channel to keep it consistent and the loop for each of these switches uh, is 205 grade zero uh, except the water kings but i'll go into why i didn't use 205 for that in a little bit after the sound test and uh, I filmed them using duskies as well, and the springs are looped with 105.
So talking about some issues with these switches, the most notable ones are the overlooping of certain switches by the factory and the extremely tight top housing in correlation with some subpar stems in some of these switches within this batch. I'll show you some clips that show this problem extremely well. Thank you to Mache Daddy, one of my good friends, for sharing this with me. And uh, yeah. So as you can see here from uh, Mache Daddy's video, uh, the some of the housings for the top uh, top housing with the stem is too tight, so it will not return at all. It's essentially a unusable switch, which is pretty problematic. Prevail, who is one of the vendors for these switches, actually uh, made an announcement that they will be giving a replacement for those switches that are affected by this problem. So uh, for the next batch, hopefully it is going to be fixed. Here we see a switch that has been overlooped. As you can see, the return is very sluggish. It's very slow, and you'll definitely notice that sort of feeling when typing. So how I was able to loop these up was that I noticed that 205 was a little too thick to loop over the factory loop. It was even too thick to loop over it after I wiped it off. Um, a lot of people put them under a ultrasonic cleaner, but I do not actually have one of those. And I'm guessing a lot of uh, people don't have one either. So what I did was just wipe off the excess loop with some paper towels, and then I looped over the uh, stem after wiping it off with 3203, which was the lightest loop that I had. Uh, this actually worked pretty well, and the switches feel pretty good with them. Uh, there's no real issues, but this is some uh, like a roadblock that you have to go through, I guess, when you're trying to loop these switches up due to how goddamn thick the lube is. Honestly, these switches are probably called the Water Kings because they're drowning in the damn lube. So in terms of smoothness from buttery smooth and uh, today we got everything Pringle scratchy. Uh, tangerine still stand at the top of the food chain for being the smoothest. Alpacas are pretty close and the uh, ever clean, ever king water glide. <laughs> Everglide Water King V3s, oh my god, why can't I talk, are, um, if they are not overlooped and you do a good job of fixing everything, then they are pretty similar to banana splits in terms of smoothness, I feel like. Dentilios, uh, Lavenders, and Gator on Black Ink V2s are pretty close. Everything around this category is, like, really close in terms of smoothness. Um, Cherry Max Blacks and Gatoron Milky Top Yellows are a little bit far off, but just the one noticeable outlier is Novelty Creams, which still stand at the very top of the Scratch food chain. In terms of the sound profile of these switches, the Gatoron Inks, Lavenders, and uh, Anki Creams are really in, on the deeper side. The Telios, when lubed, are also pretty deep. Hyperglyz or Cherry Max Blacks with its full uh, nylon blend mystery, whatever, whatever Cherry uses is also quite deep. The Water Clyde, uh, <laughs> oh, I keep messing it up. The Everglide Water Kings are, I think it's in the borderline between, it's, it's definitely a higher pitched end sort of sound in my opinion, but the there's like a slight, in, uh, how do you, what's the word for it, like connotation? indentation <laughs> precipitation there's a slight feeling of a deeper tone than compared to the rest of these uh the alpacas the banana splits are quite um on the higher end of the sound profile and the um, tangies are the highest pitched in my opinion uh, due to its uh, um wipe housing all in all, getting past the issues that I mentioned, these switches do have a pretty unique sound profile. I personally really dig the sound. They're on the higher pitched spectrum, but I sort of feel like the P PC stem gives it a tad bit deeper tone compared to your standard palm. However, I cannot really confirm this since these are the only switches that I've tried with a PC stem, and the deeper tone I'm noticing could simply be due to the lube. For enthusiasts that modify all their switches, these are undoubtedly a unique switch to try out if you want to go through the process of cleaning and relooping and experimenting. Whether or not that's worth it is really up to you. For beginners, these switches are a decent choice if you want to forego the looping process and just uh, use some stock. I might just order more than you need due to the issues I mentioned, and if you don't want to clean off the excess lube for those sluggish switches, hopefully these issues are fixed in the later batches.
With all that being said, my overall verdict is that the price of these switches right now, personally for me, are a bit too high for the performance you're getting. But since these switches are so unique, there's the price that comes with that. Uh, they're worth trying if you want something interesting and unique, and the sound profile is pretty unique at that as well. And they look pretty nice. Anyways guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. The support, as always, have been pretty crazy. We're growing super fast and I really appreciate it. And uh, more Switch reviews, more board reviews, and more everything coming soon. So uh, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one.